We are now very much into the second half of January 2024. And while the first few weeks of the year are still very much a blur in my mind, and I'm going to guess yours, we've seen automakers all around the world publish their sales data for 2023. And as a part of that, we've learned which companies had a good year, which ones didn't, and where trends are going. And while many, many people in the comments section are adamant that nobody had a good year and nobody wants to buy electric cars and only Tesla had a good year for sales, the reality is kind of different. Taking the US sales figures as a focus, it's fair to say that for the most part, legacy automaker EV sales, while generally higher than they were in previous years, still represented a far lower proportion of their total vehicle sales volume in most markets than we here at the channel would like. But that's not to say that there weren't successes. BMW's EV sales volume last year was nearly double what it was the year before, and it wasn't the only automaker to experience such a good growth. Even Ford and, and GM, whose naysayers spent most of the year complaining about vehicles sitting on dealer lots, had growth in their EV sales output. Ford's BEV sales for 2023 were up 17% on the previous year, with a large part of that thanks to fourth quarter growth in F-150 Lightning sales. GM, despite setbacks and challenges and producing enough battery packs for its Ultium vehicles, also had better EV sales than in previous years, thanks to the Bolt EV and Bolt EUV the twin vehicles which it planned to stop producing in the summer, then offered a stay of execution until the end of last year. But there's one brand which had a truly amazing year when it came to EV sales and past performance, or rather, one group, Hyundai Motor Group, which is responsible for Hyundai, Kia and Genesis badged vehicles. During 2023, combined Hyundai, Kia and Genesis EV sales outperformed every other legacy automaker, securing the brand a second place to Tesla for the year in the US. And sure, while Tesla's US sales volumes were an order of magnitude higher than those of Hyundai Motor Group, and then some, it's worth looking at how an automaker whose vehicles did not qualify for any US federal tax rebates managed to outpace two companies with vehicles in their portfolio which did qualify for tax rebates. Not to mention other non-domestic automakers whose US-made vehicles should have been a shoo-in for consumers wanting a good deal. Why did it happen? Honestly, we think there are some very simple reasons why suddenly Hyundai Motor Group's EVs sold like hotcakes, and why, when other automakers are slowing down their transition to electric, Hyundai, Kia and Genesis seem to be accelerating theirs. And frankly, it's all down to good design, good engineering and some forward thinking. Shall we? One of the truly amazing things about the electric vehicle world today is the breadth of choice in the marketplace. Just 10 years ago, there were literally just a handful of different electric cars you could buy. And now in North America, you can get everything from a full-size pickup truck to, later this year at least, a small city hatchback. Some other countries have many options in each segment. And there's something of an expectation that automakers who bring a new vehicle type or tech to market will have ultimately the head start on the competition. After all, Toyota was the first automaker to market a four-door five-seat hybrid, and it's dominated the hybrid marketplace for years since. Tesla was the first to market with a luxury electric sports sedan, and we know where Tesla is today. The Hyundai Kia Genesis family of vehicle brands weren't particularly quick to market when it came to EVs. The first vehicle from the group to go all electric was the Kia e Soul, a battery electric conversion of the already existing and highly popular Kia Soul. Far more expensive than the eminently affordable ICE Kia Soul variants, the Kia e Soul or Soul EV entered the market with specifications that frankly weren't groundbreaking. It was more expensive than the segment leader at the time, the Nissan Leaf, and while I am personally going to admit that I would opt for hamsters any day over Nissan's sometimes weird and strange Leaf adverts, it wasn't made or sold in huge numbers. That said, I am a fan of the eSoul's design and I've always wanted to own one. And Kate Walton Elliott's wife has an eSoul as her daily driver. Link in the description to their latest in ownership experience. 
But while the Kia eSoul was a battery electric version of an existing ICE vehicle, the next vehicles from the group, the Hyundai Ioniq EV, Kia Niro EV and Hyundai Kona EV, were all launched on platforms designed by Hyundai Motor Group to accommodate a variety of different drivetrain options, including hybrid, plug-in hybrid and battery electric. And while each of those vehicles weren't exactly large in their range capabilities and weren't exactly competitively priced, they showed serious improvements in EV capabilities. They offered familiar interiors comparable with gasoline models from the brand. They offered improvements to charging, ditching the Chatamo of the eSoul and adopting CCS. And they were pretty solidly built too. The Kia Niro EV is still, frankly, one of my top EVs of all time because it just gets the job done. And while other automakers were obsessing over speed and range, these three vehicles were quietly testing the water and figuring out exactly what customers wanted in an EV. And then it happened. It happened in 2020 when Hyundai Motor Group teased a brand new vehicle platform called the Electric Global Modular Platform or EGMP for short. It was designed to underpin all of the group's electric vehicles for the next few years and unlike most other automakers, the platform was designed from the ground up to take advantage of not only different battery pack capabilities and drivetrains, but add charging support for both 4 and 800 volt DC fast charging and an onboard two-way power inverter for vehicle to load capabilities. Just like Tesla had used a skateboard design into which different the battery pack and drivetrain options were placed, so too did the eGMP platform offer a range of different drivetrain and battery pack options to cover everything from an economical runabout to an out and out track monster. While Hyundai Motor Group wasn't the first to develop a platform with 800 volt quick charging, that distinction goes to Porsche. It was the first automaker to bring 800 volt DC fast charging to mainstream non-luxury vehicles. It was also the first automaker to include 400 and 800 volt fast charging without a penalty for using 400 volts. Porsche had, in its early days of the Taycan, included 800 volt charging as standard and added 50 kilowatt capabilities to the 400 volt DC fast charging circuits. If you wanted to charge at a higher speed at a 400 volt charging station, you needed to pay for an additional charging package to do it. Admittedly, Initial experiences of those with 800 volt capable cars wasn't great, especially when the first 800 volt capable charging stations were far from reliable. But as time has gone on, 800 volt fast charging has become more practical and that's been really beneficial to eGMP based vehicles. Instead of spending 40 or 50 minutes charging at a fast charger, customers can fast charge a reasonable amount of range in 15 minutes or less, which frankly dramatically improves the ownership experience for anyone who either does not have at home charging or who makes regular long distance trips. At this point, you're probably wondering why I'm spending so much time talking about the platform of eGMP based cars, but I genuinely believe the platform is the reason why Hyundai Motor Group's vehicles are proving so popular today. In addition to the capability to get power into the vehicle quickly, the V to L functionality is quite honestly the feature I hear most about from Hyundai Ioniq 5, Ioniq 6 and Kia EV6 owners, especially at this time of year when power cuts abound. Until the eGMP platform, if you wanted to pull power out of an EV, you needed an expensive two-way charging station, as was the case with the Nissan Leaf and other Chidemo compatible cars, and is still the case with my Ford F-150 Lightning. Or, frankly, you needed to homebrew something to science the shit out of the situation with potatoes and something. That's all filing good if you are a nerd but less so if you just want to drive an EV and really do not care about how the power gets in and out of your vehicle, just that it does. Hyundai Group's plug-in adapter, which allows you to pull power out of the socket you usually use to charge your vehicle, was a stroke of genius for V to L. It is small, it is compact and is easy to use and it's designed to allow you to power just enough to get you through a power cut. Sure, it won't run your entire house. You'll definitely need an F-150 Lightning right now for that. But it's a lot cheaper than that particular solution and dare I say it, more reliable? 
And it's enough to just plug your laptop computer, your mobile phone, and maybe your refrigerator into your car to keep yourself going during a power cut. Okay, I, I'm maybe being unfair. You can actually plug a whole lot more into your eGMP based vehicle. And to see just how much, go over and watch the video that Alec from Technology Connections made. I'll link to it in the description. It showcases just how much energy he used over the course of an entire weekend running his home from his Ionic 5 EV. Go watch it and subscribe. It's a good video. While we are on the subject of the platform, let's examine the motor choices. While I will admit that I'm not a fan of the entry-level rear-wheel drive eGMP cars I drove, I drove an entry-level EV6 and definitely wasn't impressed with its acceleration or performance, it is also fair to note that it's adequate for most people's daily driving needs. The fact that the eGMP platform can accommodate multiple different motor choices is frankly one of its strengths. Moreover, Unlike some of the all-wheel drive EVs in which motors are always engaged, Hyundai Motor Group had the sense to design the front-wheel drive unit to be a motor type that could electrically disconnect when not required, improving overall vehicle efficiency. Which, by the way, is why the absolute beast that is the Kia EV6 GT can hit 170 miles per hour in what feels like the blink of an eye but it can also achieve decent-ish long-range road tripping sensibilities when you need it to. The final part of the Hyundai Group's plan is unique design. Frankly, there's nothing quite like the Ionic 5 on the road, and it's different to all of the other crossover SUVs out there, yet at the same time, Hyundai, Kia and Genesis EVs all have an identity that blend back into their respective badges. In-car and onboard tech also isn't in your face like it is in, say, the Ford Mustang Mark E. Sure, there is a dashboard made of two discrete screens, with the inner one being a touchscreen, but the design is close to Hyundai Kia Genesis's internal combustion engine models and isn't alienating. It isn't quirky. It's what you'd expect from a regular car. And for end users, that is important, especially if this is their first electric car. The only quirky thing I can think of is that weird orb in the Genesis GV60. But honestly, the less that we say about that, the better. Before you think that this is a love letter to the eGMP platform, I'm going to be honest, it isn't. There have been some things that Hyundai Group have royally screwed up. Having no wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is an ongoing joke on this channel every time we review an eGMP platformed car trying to persuade it to connect wirelessly. And yeah, it doesn't have it. But no wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. For no readily apparent reason now. As with the other cars on the eGMP platform, both CarPlay and Android Auto are only supported in wired mode. There's no wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. I know, it's becoming a bit of a running joke now. And both Hyundai and Kia seem eager to bleed their customer base dry for connected services for basic functionality. There have been hiccups with vehicles and a slew of early teething problems too that are thankfully now seemingly resolved. And let's not forget initial availability which was diabolical for nearly the first year of production in some markets. Not to mention those high battery replacement costs in Canada. But finally, and most importantly, I think that the Hyundai Kia Genesis offering of EVs have performed so well in the last year because they're not being advertised primarily as electric vehicles. They are being advertised as part of each brand's respective lineup. And they're not so different in their appearance that they're putting people off. And while they do have technology in them, the technology isn't off-putting, but rather more useful. Take, for example, remote control. Being able to pull your car into and out of a tight parking space while you're not inside it? That's incredibly useful in some markets. More useful, some would argue, in fact, than being able to have the car drive you on the freeway. And if we add to that a trio of brands whose reputation has grown as being ones that offer incredible warranty and generally pretty good after-sales service, and frankly, it's not surprising that people are opting for them. Sure, I personally drive a Ford F-150 Lightning and a Chevrolet Bolt, but I suspect if we had to go shopping to replace the Chevy Bolt, 
the Kia Hyundai Genesis lineup would be right there on our potential test drive list. All three brands have utilized the eGMP platform in subtly different ways that all complement each other, but each manages to identify exactly what customers really want. And it's not just another faceless, oversized SUV with semi-autonomous capabilities. Sorry, Ford. Sorry, GM. And sorry to plenty of other brands too. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, about $10.08 per year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Tantalus A. Bond, Michael Baker, Christopher Lawrence, David J. Stober, Noah Tutak, and Ian Hoffman. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have an old-fashioned P.O. box you can reach us at, address also below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. This month, we're celebrating electric for everyone with an amazing new t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some fantastic content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you very soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we all think that this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!